so amazing to be at home for a longer period of time and today I'm just chilling I'm tired from all the touring and everything hurts so I'm just recovering now before I start with hardcore practicing again and yeah today I took my brand new 390 Duke I just got this bike for myself to use it in my free time like today it's actually spring time in Slovenia in Europe and it's just amazing weather we just found with Dominic a real nice twisty road not far away from my home and we're gonna use it today for some action and yeah this bike we're gonna also turn into the sickest street legal stunt bike on the planet but with your help more about that idea in the coming vlogs and today we are actually here for what Dominic we're gonna do the Q&A Today is Q&A day. So we picked out 10 favorite questions for you guys. We tried to do a mix of different kind of questions. Dominic, how many questions did we got from our social media? I think 500, 600. <laughs> that was a lot, man. Thanks, guys. That makes vlogging much more fun when you drop cool comments so we can build some stories out of it. Keep it going, guys. And yeah, let's start with the first question and let's rock and roll. Okay, first question from our YouTube community page from Mr. Abis Tiadis. I hope I said your name right. You own a KTM only because of sponsorship or it's because you really like it and there is no other like KTM. Actually, when I started with KTM, I just rode the bikes because I was sponsored. You know, you need to know that I was an amateur still fighting for sponsorship to survive. I didn't have any money. So having a factory contract on the table, you don't think about, is this a good bike to ride? Is this a good company to work? You just say yes, because because this is the the highest goal in terms of sponsorship that you can achieve yeah I wasn't the different than other all the other stunt riders so we stunt riders are actually not really the motorsport athletes that companies are fighting for there are some MotoGP riders and motocross riders those are the athletes that are actually companies looking for we stunt riders we always need to fight for sponsorships after a while I was riding with KTM bikes I freaking fell in love in those bikes first you don't need to change a lot on those bikes in terms of uh, the frame because the frames are tube frames and they are really solid in stunt riding that's really important just a pity was that there was no parts on the market so we need to start to develop the parts from nothing so uh, that was a bit of a struggle but after a time we got everything so now it's by far the sickest bike I can imagine to ride so it's not only about the bike it's also how how is it to work with KTM they are so passionate about all aspects of bikes so if racing freestyle marketing everything so if I ask them hey guys I want to go to ride a show on the Mont Everest they will not say are you crazy dude we will not support you they were actually they will sit down with me and listen to my ideas and this is what I'm looking for when I'm looking for sponsors that they are actually willing to support me on the projects it's not about the money they pay me it's about if they are willing to do some cool stuff you know and this is what takes you to another level so KTM is one of those sponsors that are really open for new ideas thanks KTM to be such a cool sport all the guys that are working there and yeah KTM is my opinion by far number one motorcycle company in the world oh that 390 is so much fun man pure corner rocket so easy to lean in the corner because it power to weight ratio and check this left one I feel like Valentino Rossi again back in Slovenia okay guys the next question is from Mr. Ali Imran from the YouTube community and he's asking what is my income from the moto vlogging and guys he would laugh if I would tell you the exact number but I'm not sure if I can tell you because I don't know what's written in the YouTube contract I would need to check it but let's put it this way I could fill up from the whole month that I earned from YouTube this tank here on the Duke so you you know how much it is and it's nothing with that money I cannot support the motor vlogging that we are doing it now on this level so luckily how we do it you're probably asking yourself right now is because of my sponsors I asked them to help me out to support me on that project and they said okay rock we believe you let's see how it's working and guys because of you my rock on family 
this is working very well you are sharing those vlogs you're watching it you're enjoying it with us yeah this is why it keeps me pushing and keeps me motivating with Dominic to put every week a new rock on vlog and yeah that's it about the the earnings so let's go to the next question Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Let's do the second question, Dominic. And that was heavy, I feel the pain in my back. The Sharon Buya wants to ask us, or me, how do you prepare yourself before going for any stunt show? I'm definitely not doing that, and I'm definitely do don't do any exercise before the shows, because it's actually as soon as I land with the plane, it's already go time. That means interviews, photo shoots, video shoots, a lot of action. So I'm already tired when I arrive to the show day, and I try to save as much as possible energy I can. And the only thing that I do that it's very important for me is stretching. Stretching is by far the most important thing in any sport. So. I do always a really good stretching, some music, but I don't I don't focus anymore. I like few years ago I put in earplugs, I mean uh, earphones and listen to some music and try to focus. It get me really more and more stressed. So now I don't do anything, just stretching, talk to my friends and as soon as they say rock and roll time, I just put on my helmet and I start with the shows. And beside the stunt riding, I love to do mountain bikes, I love to do hiking and I freaking love cinema. I just love watch movies. Next question from Instagram from Mr. Ertugrul CLK. What is the mystery of your vest? You mean probably that vest, right? So when I was back in the scooter days, when I was still deciding what should be my style of tricks, and not only tricks, also my looks. So I wanted to be different than anybody else that is wearing a jacket or motocross gear. So I wanted to also to have my tricks more smooth and elegant. And who is doing that? It's ballerinas. They're doing pirouettes and so on. That's why I decided to wear an elegant vest that represents also my style of riding. After a while, when I started to ride KTM bikes, my style turned into a really wild, aggressive, fast style. And I also updated my vest into a rock and roll vest. And it has all my favorite bands on it, my logos. And it also says full throttle ride and slay. It's just the full throttle, slaying tires, have fun, just rock and roll. And that's the story behind my vest. And it brings me luck. And that's it, guys. Na 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 na. Is the tire touching? Push it more, more. Okay, good, good. Do we have a clickbait? Yep. Yeah. That's another 5 million clickbait shot. Anyway, <laughs> next question from our YouTube community from Moto Mirius. Hey Rock, it's David. When will the 2017 crash protection hit your shop? And on your green KTM vlog, you showed the formable slider mounts to avoid frame damage. Do you not need them on your crash protection because of low speed or because your engine cage has multiple attachment points to spread the load? First question, 2017 crash cages and other cool parts are finally coming to our shop in three weeks for the 2017 Dukes and 2018 and so on. Uh, and also RCs, guys, go check our online shop, follow it and you will be able to purchase soon the new cool rock-on parts. And the second question, and the second question why we don't use the formable slider mounts is because our crash cage needs to withstand multiple crashes when you crash you need to lift it up and continue to ride and it has as David already said multiple crashing points so the impact force is spreading through the whole frame and doesn't destroy the one point on the frame so that's the reason why we don't use it and yeah let's go to the next question <laughs> Ah, man, 
The next question from Mr. Rur Kong is asking about my shock absorber. What kind of brand you put on the bike at the moment? The black color? Is it means the original KTM mono absorber is not good for heavy stunt duty? Actually, the stock suspension is good for some basic tricks and riding on the streets. But for the next level tricks, I recommend if you have the option and the budget to upgrade for some racing suspension. I'm using some prototype that we did a few years ago with VW has the rebound and compression option to set up. I can use the power when it's rebounding. I can use this power to jump from one position to another uh, much easier than with a stock suspension. I'm gonna upgrade all my stunt bikes with some new suspension from a different brand. So I cannot really tell you for now. It should be a secret for the coming vlogs. So keep watching our Rock on Vlogs. Okay, a quick break from our 390 Duke ride. Outside is a thunderstorm, it's raining middle of the day, but we're gonna use that opportunity for the next question on Instagram from GvilTR. And it's the question for Headlands, man. He's asking, how did you meet Rock and how did you start working as a team on your expeditions? We met at kindergarten, we were like, five years old or something like that uh, fell in love in same teacher become best buddies <laughs> <laughs> this is the story how we met luckily the the thing with falling in love in the same girl changed otherwise we were still fighting right <laughs> yeah we know who's gonna lose but okay <laughs> <laughs> the next question is uh, then how did you start as a team i start uh, loving photography and uh, video making and we uh, started to do some small projects just to make some cool content and somebody needed to hold the camera to capture me and put me on youtube back in the day I was still holding the camera wasn't really filming right yeah i don't know <laughs> nothing about cameras, cameras yeah. just push record and what happens happens and, and rock hit it right then now we are actually traveling the world and can you say you are a professional filmer now i think yeah i'm happy that i'm doing what i love and that's most important that's it that's headlands question let's continue to the next one Man, stop watching Instagram, we have to finish the vlog. Uh, okay, guys, next question. Samir Shretsa. Okay, that's his name on Instagram. Quite hard to say. He's asking, do you have any crush on someone? Beside my girlfriend, Maribi, I love RVB Rauchfeld Porsche cars. Those fat tires, white bodies. Man, I love this design. I hope one day I will have that car. Beside that, Dominic, what can I have a crush on? Maybe on some... Hollywood stars? Ah, good, good question. But the easy one, Scarlett Johansson. I just love that girl and she's amazing. And beside that, I have a crush on all my bikes at home. That's pretty much it. Next question from YouTube community from Sumin Shrecha. I hope I pronounced the surname pro uh, properly. Tell us your love story with Maribi. Where did you meet her? How you become a couple? Want to know about you and Maribi. Love from Nepal to both of you and your team. Would you bring Maribi to Nepal for the next show? As soon as she saw the pictures that I sent her, she said it's an amazing place. So I'm quite sure she is coming next time with me to Nepal. And how did we meet? We are actually living very close. We know us for many years, but we never really spoke. We always say just hi, how are you? And that's it. And one day, actually two years ago, we I went after a really, really long tour. I was super tired and I had one week free. I told to myself, okay, let's go to this barbecue event, meet some friends and so on. And she was also there. She was sitting next to me and we start to chat and so and so on. And she loves ice cream. I didn't know that, but I just bought her an ice cream. Uh, maybe that was a trigger that she liked me more. <laughs> I don't know. On that barbecue event, we, we also went for a short basketball game and that, that girl was really getting my attention. I love what she is doing. She's really motivated. She, she's doing her own thing. On, on social media, she's a graphic designer, she writes uh, articles, she is doing many things and this is what I love on, uh, on people. So that's the Maribi Rock love story if you want it like that. And I, the future is bright, I hope many years to come. And yeah, now it's time for the last question. We arrived at the last question of our Q&A and we saved by far 
the most asked questions for many years. And I'm talking about the question from Nikhil Gaonkar and he's saying whole India wants to know why you don't visit India. My Indian rockers, I would freaking love to come to India for so many years already, but let me tell you first how this works. So that I come to a certain country and throw a huge rock on show, we need an official invite from someone that it's organizing either that event or it's a distributor, usually is that a KTM distributor. So they are preparing this project and they are supporting and sponsoring it. And yeah, for now we never get this invite to India for, for the last seven years. And we are still waiting for that invite and we would love to come to India. So maybe you can help me guys. Maybe you have a friend that has a friend that it's throwing big music festivals, sport festivals, motorsport festivals. And those guys should invite or send us an email and we're gonna make sure we make a good deal and we come to India and we throw a huge rock on show. Let's get to work guys and let's rock India. Guys, that's it for this q and I hope you liked our pick of top 10 questions. We're gonna do soon the next one with headlines, so drop some new comments below. We're gonna choose another top 10 out of them for the next q and and I need to go ride my new 390. So see you next time. Until then, rock on.